Today's scripture is found in Ecclesiastes 5.10 and John 16.33. Ecclesiastes 5.10 says, He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This is also vanity. And John 16.33 these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Western society teaches us to seek the good life as they define it. The good life is a term for the lifestyle society wants us to pursue. It's based on getting, having, and enjoying. And this lifestyle, this worldview, if you will, is a derivative of the teachings of Aristotle. If you put good life into a internet search engine in about a half a second, you'll get 130 million hits. They must talk a lot about that out there. But it's critical to remember that the good life, as society defines it, is not compatible with being a Christian. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, look there with me at verse 2. Paul says in Romans 12 verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For Christians, the truly good life is not based on society's views, nor their methods, nor the means of Satan's influenced world. For Christians, Jesus is the way to a better life. And Jesus corrects society's misconceptions. The society we grew up in, the world out there, teaches us that having things is important. As important as having things is, having more things is even more important. To the world, the good life means pleasure. More pleasure is even more important. And we don't want to wait. Instant gratification. The easiest way to sell a new product is say it'll do whatever it does quicker than the old way. The world uses two words to sum up its version of the good life. Happiness and peace based on possessions and pleasure. Many in the world, and unfortunately some in the church, believe that material possessions will bring happiness and peace. A simple, short, brief review of the internet will tell you that's flat out wrong. Here's one illustration. The guy who thought up a Victoria's Secret, a rather prominent organization in the world last year in its 1100 stores sold six billion with a B dollars worth of merchandise he was so unhappy he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge to his death so obviously something's missing do a web search when you get home tomorrow morning and see what happens to many people who win state lotteries. Some of them get shot for their money. So to correct the lies that society teaches, Jesus taught there was more to life than just having things. Find Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12... Look at verse 15. 
Luke chapter 12 is in here somewhere. Verse 15. And he, Jesus, said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in, the, consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he goes on to tell the parable of the rich fool from there through verse 21. So Jesus is trying to help his followers understand that Aristotle's way interpreted by Satan's world is not the ticket to happiness. Wilmer, flip on our overhead slide, please. Wilmer's going. <laughs> Christ Object Lessons, a great book if you haven't read it. It explains all the parables. Here we go. Christ Object Lesson, page 259. To live for self is to perish. Can't get much plainer than that. The desire of benefit for self's sake cuts the soul off from life. It is the spirit of Satan to get to draw to self. It is the spirit of Christ to give, to sacrifice self for the good of others. And this is the record. God has given us, given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. And may I suggest, doesn't have the better life here and now. Thanks, Wilmer. Jesus, the way to better life, offers the things that he knows will give his followers the better life. He offers us peace, which the things of this world will not provide. He offers joy, which is complete and full. Go back to John, where we spent the last three months. Look at John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says in John chapter 14, Verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What Jesus wants us to have is not what the world wants us to have. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have joy. And he knows how we can get it. Look at John chapter 15, verse 11. These things, Jesus says in verse 11, I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Jesus wants us to have the good life and he knows the right way for us to get it. Joy of Jesus comes from listening to the word of God and following his love-based commandments. This is such an important point that we're going to jump into a series of sermons on the Ten Commandments starting next Sabbath. What the world can't give, Jesus offers to us freely, and he's interested in our best interest. He wants us to have the good life. Seems only logical to ask, how's he going to make that happen? The world system doesn't work. So what is Jesus going to do that's different? Simply put, Jesus identifies and removes the real barrier to our happiness. The world doesn't understand, nor can the world recognize the true cause of their unhappiness. Unhappiness does not come from the lack of things, nor immoral acts, nor theft, nor murder, nor coveting, nor deceit, nor pride. These things are all bad. They damage you. They damage your family. But they're not the cause of your unhappiness. Jesus tells us the fundamental cause in Mark chapter 7. 
Mark chapter 7, land in verse 21. Mark chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus tells us the real cause of unhappiness. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a man. So the root cause to our happiness must be inside me. Don't get real smiley because it's inside you too. James chapter 4 helps us understand a little bit more. James chapter 4 verse 1. Where do wars, fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder or covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask incorrectly, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? World way, God's way, and never the twain shall meet. Joy of Jesus is there for our taking. He wants us to have joy. He wants us to enjoy the good life. And he understands what the real problem is. Turn to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, we'll start in verse 3. Paul is talking in Titus chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The fundamental reason we aren't enjoying life is that we are sinners. And even though Satan makes sure that we think sin is fun, sin is what prevents us from having the good life. That sin problem is inside us. Jesus knows there's no amount of money that can make us have the good life until we deal with the sin problem. Out of the kindness of his heart, Jesus went to Calvary to make sure that you and I can be righteous in front of God. It's a straightforward proposition. Accept my shed blood. Become my disciple, and you will have the good life. If you don't, you're on your own, and good luck. But even though that's a pretty impressive, significant accomplishment, there's even more good news. Even though we are sinners, Jesus gives us what we don't deserve. He'll take care of the sin problem, which should be good enough. But then once we choose to be his disciples, he does even more. Once we stop making material things, selfish pleasure, and the fame of this world, the goals that we choose to follow, and we learn to follow Jesus in accordance with the word, he does marvelous things for us. 
That's what the apostles figured out as they lived with him for three years. It's what the first century disciples understood as those apostles told them the stories. And this is what Jesus expects of us, his 21st century disciples. When disciples follow Jesus and his teachings, then he provides all that we need. God gives us material things. God gives us what we need for this life when we put him first. Find Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles, his word for unsaved, after all these things the unsaved seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You lack for material things. Maybe our emphasis is on the wrong syllable. Or maybe we're confused the difference between wants and needs. A lot of people think those words are interchangeable. No, not so much. Not only does he provide the material things, but he also provides for our pleasure. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that your joy may remain, my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Being joyful all the time. Complete joy, not partial. God wants to give that to those who follow him. We get material things that we don't deserve. We get pleasure, joy we don't deserve. We also get glory. Find the Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, look at verse 11. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11, Therefore we also... Pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be glorified in Jesus our Savior. When you live for Jesus and follow his example, you have the better life. Amen. We have two more passages and we're done. I want you to listen for the word blessed as I read these two passages. Blessed means truly happy. It means having the good life. If you want to follow along, our first one's in John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 12 through 17. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garment and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I think we'll have a chance to do that soon. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Happy could be translated as blessed in other translations. It isn't enough just to know the book. It isn't enough to be able to quote scripture or spirit of prophecy. We are blessed, we are happy when we 
do them. Find Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, look at verse 35. I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. The world chases after what they can get and aren't happy. Jesus says you want to be truly happy. If you want to have the good life, give to others that which you have. I bet you Stephen and Uliana were on cloud nine for about six hours after the garage sale was open. Not that they made some money with the garage sale. I'm sure they did. They were excited and happy because they had a chance to give that which they had to somebody else. Satan world sets before us goals which many desire, many chase after, most don't achieve. And even if they do achieve them, like the founder of Victoria's Secret, they don't satisfy. Our scripture reader says, if you're chasing after silver, silver is not going to satisfy. But Jesus places before us goals which we can achieve with the help of the Holy Spirit. And those goals do satisfy. Some of you may not be convinced that you can achieve that which God asks you to do. Eh, I'm not that good. You don't know what I did in my past. I can't get there from here. Satan whispers in your ear. But you want the happy life. You want the good stuff. So I have you turn to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 13, where Paul tells us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, including having the good life. All of us can live for Jesus. The question to ponder as we enjoy the Lord's Supper this morning is, will we? Yeah, we know the words to say, we know what day to show up, we know what motions to go through, but that isn't it. Do we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If we do, we are on the path to having the good life. If we're just going through the motions, then we're just going through the motions. Communion service is open to anyone who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have no idea where we're supposed to go. But out that door there's a place for guys. And out that door there's a place for ladies. And out that door there's a place for couples. You all probably know where you're going. Those of you who are staying behind, don't be talking. It's not a social event. If you're not going there to do what Jesus demonstrated we should do, then sit quietly and listen to the Holy Spirit. And when we get back together, we'll enjoy the Lord's Supper together as his family here in Auburn.